Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I want to go back and recover uh, Fedora 42. This will be 42.1. And I reran my tests. They're clean. All the, pa all the problems that I had found have been fixed. Uh, I ran through the security checks. Uh, I think it was over last weekend. And everything was working. I can't tell you exactly when it was patched, but it was. And that's that's awesome. That is just totally awesome that the, the team came through like that. Let's take a look into what Fedora has to offer. So the first thing is the system requirements. These, these have not changed. Uh, they're still uh, a single CPU with at least 1 gigahertz frequency, 2 gig of memory, uh, 20 gig of disk and a 1024 by 768 display, although you may find it more comfortable with more memory, more disk, and a larger screen size, uh, screen resolution, just because the complexity of the system uh, and the number of things that are running on it. So, the work, as I said, we're going to be looking at Fedora Workstation today. Before you ask and before you say, gosh, I really hate gnome i always choose these to do my benchmarking because this is the flagship this is the main one that they do now kde we'll get to that but kde just recently reached uh the status of a regular supported distro and that's great so you have a choice between which ones are default you can go kde or you can go workstation so on, on at least Fedora Workstation, you need a 2 gigahertz dual core CPU or better. 4 gig of memory, although I would recommend 8. Uh, 20 gigabyte of disk space. Yeah, that's probably going to be a little tight, especially if you're doing anything, you know, useful. And then 1024 by 768. Again, the screen resolution probably you'll want to be larger in order to be more comfortable. Uh, in terms of things, now it, it, the Linux kernel when I when I started to review this was 6.14. As of yesterday, they have upgraded to 6.15, and Fedora does that. The kernel will migrate as they complete testing. So, if you're wondering, well, gee, I just installed it and it's 6.15, not 14. What are you talking about? So, yeah. well, we're going to go through the changes of the base release. So in case you pull the uh, package off their website, this would be the kernel that would install initially without updates. So uh, the first thing is there's a an NT synchronization primitive driver, and that is to allow for faster games. Uh, the ButterFS or BetterFS RAID 1 uh, has read balancing support now. There's all, which means that it ping pongs between the two drives uh, when it's doing reads. That is what a RAID 1 should do, uh, and uh, so that's good. Uh, there's also support for uncached buffered I.O. now, which should speed things up a little bit. Uh, there's also a new FS Notify, which... Uh, which is a file pre-access notifi notification event. There's... Uh, a lot of people still use timers to determine if there's a file that's arrived. That hasn't been necessary for some time because of the SF Notify event. There's other things in there you can trigger on as well, like the first byte arrival in the file. Uh, there's also the, uh, the D-Memory C group for better control of GPU memory. View support for IO ring based communications now. So if you do have a file system that is supporting Fuse, which uh, I, know, I don't recommend that you run Fuse because it's just slow. Try to find a, uh, if, you, if you have to, you have to. But uh, yeah, if, if your file system uh, type that you're looking for supports uh, native uh, file systems, uh, you would want to prefer to, to default to that, not Fuse. Because Fuse adds, a, adds quite a bit of overhead. So just be aware of that. Because it is, it is, Fuse runs in user mode, whereas you really want your file system support to run in, in system mode or the kernel mode. So this, uh, this, six, this kernel also adds AMD XDNA driver support, 
uh, for AMD NPUs. So those should start appearing. Now, now to tell you the truth, Intel NPUs have been showing up in the uh, in the driver list for some time. However, I don't know why, but I have not been successful to actually open and use one. So this would be interesting uh, to try out with 6.14. XFS Relink. So XFS is another file system. And they the, the team there has been busy trying to f still flushing out the uh, XFS support that was originally in Silicon Graphics. The uh, XFS driver that went into open source did not have a complete function set of the Silicon Graphics driver, which probably done on purpose in order to protect uh, Silicon Graphics, uh, you know, their uh, probably their intellectual capital and their advantage over an open source driver. But they're long gone, and yeah, and so they've been busy adding additional support to that. NFS uh, version 4.2 plus, there's an attribute delegate uh, now, or delegation mode if you prefer. x86 TLB flushing scalability optimizations. Uh, FEX fast emulator, that allows uh, both x86, so that would be previously the old 32-bit mode, and x86 64 binaries to run on ARM. Wow, that's a big deal, finally. Now we have, and I haven't tested this out, but I have personally run into that before where there was some applications that just weren't compiled for ARM and I wanted to be able to run them, but unfortunately, uh, but prior to this, the kernel did not support it. Well, now it does. So, what, all right, what about the changes for Fedora 42 over 41? So, yeah, let's let's go through that list. So, before we dive into that, let's talk about the EOL. Now, I usually have a long list of uh, previous Fedoras, but and because this is a mid-year release for them, their main release is usually in the fall. Uh, well, in the past, it used to be that way anyway. Uh, the Fedora 41, if you're still on that, that will go end of life. Yeah, that's right. End of life, November the 19th, 2025. And Fedora 42 will go end of life May 13th, 2026. You usually get 13 months on a Fedora release. That just prov provides you the ability to skip one release of Fedora just in case. You know, you really don't want to take it. You just would prefer to stay on what you were doing. It'll continue to nag you to update, though. The Fedora editions, the official editions of Fedora are... Uh, Workstation GNOME, and you'll notice KDE Plasma has been added now. There's also uh, Fedora editions for server, cloud, core OS, and IoT. Those are their official uh, editions. Uh, then you have uh, the atomic desktops. These are, uh, these are the ones that have immutability, like Fedora Silverblue, which is GNOME. Fedora uh, Kinoit, which is KDE, Budgie, which is, of course, Budgie, Sway, which is Sway, and there's a new one now for Cosmic, if you prefer to do that. Somebody keep, there, a lot of people are, I think, confused by Cosmic. They keep thinking that it's nothing more than GNOME. No, it's not, Cosmic is not GNOME. It's nothing like GNOME. It's not even ba based remotely on GNOME code. It's completely rewritten in Rust. Is it done yet? I don't think so. I, I, I don't think there's actually, I could be wrong about this, and it's been a while since I've checked the Pop! OS uh, status on it, but the last time I checked, which was about a month ago, I guess, it still wasn't there. If, it's, if what I'm saying is not true, I'll put a correction here in the video. Uh, the Fedora spins are XFCE Desktop, Cinnamon, Mate, and Compiz. Uh, i3, which is a window manager, LXQT, LXDE, and SOAS, uh, or SOAS if you prefer. There's also the Sway Tiling Window Manager, the Budgie Desktop, uh, Miracle Desktop, which is I, I think was introduced last time, and KDE Mobile Desktop, and then you'll notice the non-mutable, non-immutable version of Cosmic. So... Uh, if you prefer to, not to have something that you go through 
to uh, manage the system uh, from an update standpoint, then you could just have a traditional Cosmic Desktop if you wish. Uh, there's also a number of labs. These are, uh, these are uh, curated distributions that focus on particular subject areas. For example, the first one is astronomy. So if you're an amateur astronomer or even a professional astronomer, there are tools in that distribution which help you identify when objects in the sky will be visible as well as a number of other tools that you have. Uh, in there as well. There's also Comp Neuro. Uh, there's Design Suite, which is for graphic artists. There's games. Uh, so if you're a gamer, maybe you might want to start there, maybe not. Uh, because Those are Linux games, not, not Windows games. So we have the next one is Jam, if you're audio. Uh, Python Classroom, if you're uh, either teaching or, or taking a class in Python. You might find that useful because uh, it has a full Python environment set up for you. There's also scientific computing and the security lab if you're doing things like that. Uh, there's uh, also a new installer that uh, replaces the old installer that most people just hated. Uh, not myself. I, I'm <laughs> Anaconda was uh, kind of it was. It went from Anaconda to this latest one, but it was, I mean, to tell you the truth, it was kind of cumbersome uh, because you had to go in and configure each thing, then come back out, then go into the next item, configure that. This is much simpler, uh, Patternfly. It is. It looks like a typical web-driven style app, so I know it's not, but it currently is only on the workstation version. Uh, yeah, I don't. I didn't test it to see if it was actually on KDE or not. I haven't yet installed Fedora for KDE yet. I will probably this weekend though. Anaconda as is now a Wayland app, so that that is starting to finish the demise for X11, at least on the Fedora distros. OCI replaces the OS tree, so if you're using Immutable uh, versions of Fedora, you now have a new way of updating and managing your immutable applications that need updates. GUID, uh, partition table, and GPT is now the default. There's, uh, of course, Tiger VNC being an X11 application cannot be used for remote access. So uh, if you're doing that, you'll they recommend that you use remote desktop. Uh, which is a Microsoft version of that. So uh, that will support Wayland, uh, whereas Tiger VNC is X11 based. Bin is sim linked to user bin. Looks like we're going back to the old way of Linux. Uh, I personally don't think that's a good idea, but I mean, I know the Unix tradition. Uh, the Unix tradition was that you had applications in slash See, the, the, the point of Unix was, in the separation of those two, was that you would install a minimum set of applications that would allow you to recover in the event that you could not mount your user partition because in the old days, Unix would mount user separately as its own partition uh, in, in order to, just because the drives were so much smaller back then. That's no longer the case. So, I mean, from a modern standpoint, this makes sense, but... From a standpoint of well, what if I what if I put user on its own partition and or its own drive and now I can't start the machine because the drive has failed, I won't have the tools that I need in order to troubleshoot it. So that's what Ben and S Ben were for originally. Just to explain that once again to these younger people that are coming along who don't understand why, why do we need both bin and sbin. Well, if you're symlinking, you don't. <laughs> FIPS mode utility is removed from Fedora, and there are workarounds that are possible. Uh, System D users uh, is, is a new utility to create system users. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, System D continues its march to own everything on Linux. System D first boot replaces uh, Zezery, uh, which is a old provisioning server that if you were in uh, a 
an environment where you were spinning up a number of systems, uh, then you probably would use Zesery to do that in the old days. Also, Intel SGX is now enabled. Some people will be horrified at that, like myself. I was totally horrified by that. But And some people will applaud it. Uh, iBus Speech to Text uh, is now available as part of the iBus infrastructure. Squash FS is replaced by Aero FS for live media. So that should speed up things a little bit. Performance improvements to DNF5 and, uh, and NumPy replaced uh, by NumPy2. So they're continuing the march there in order to provide uh, more recent activity and development for uh, AI. What about the core utilities? I'm just going to read through a few of these, not all of them. So the base utilities for development, GCC has now been promoted to 15, bin utils to 2.44. These aren't major jumps, but GLib 241 uh, and, and GDB 15 plus. The other thing I want to cover here is how does this compare with other distributions? Now, I am going, I am, to tell you the truth, I'm having some issues with Fedora on some of my platforms that will not install. So I, it, 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 I don't know if it's something I have configured wrong, and that's probably the case, uh, because it, the same architecture, this is for the Intel Meteor Lake, works fine on a laptop, but not on one of the mini PCs that's also running a Meteor Lake uh, chip. I suspect that the problem is is that it has to do with uh, the BIOSes being uh, kind of shrunk down uh, today, where you know the the laptop has a full BIOS, so I'm able to change things in there that I can't modify on the other one. So I I don't think this is I don't believe it's a Fedora problem at all. I think it's just this uh, BIOS problem with the the uh, the uh, uh, system. So, what's my final thoughts on this? I, I want to thank the Fedora dev team, though. I, I apologize for not submitting my bug report, but the, uh, the problem is I had, I had uh, sent a message to the, uh, e the uh, email list for bug reports and asked for a PGP key and which I got back an answer from somebody saying, well, we don't support PGP keys. We do GPG. Yeah, I know that. But if you go and look at the library, it's called PGP still. The, the Fedora post on my video went on for 10 days. And it was <laughs> not one of them. Not one of those people actually ran uh, the commands that I gave you folks. And by the way, thank you to all of those of you who did. I do appreciate it. Uh, you you uncovered that this problem was widespread. It wasn't just Fedora; it was every System D in, in install in the that was recent. Uh, so yeah, thank you guys and ladies so much for doing that. I sure do appreciate you uh, because you really pinpointed that this was a much bigger problem. Thanks for listening. I hope to see you again soon, and bye for now.